Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Greg Ayotte. I'm the Director of Consumer Services with the Brain Injury Association of America, and I am here today with uh, three members of the Brain Injury Association of America's uh, Survivor Advisory Council. We have Stacia, Carol, and Angela joining us today, again, talking about advocacy. Um, and we'll start with um, Carol. Can we talk a little bit about kind of what advocacy means to you and kind of how maybe you got started in becoming more of an advocate? Certainly, yes. You know, advocacy has really been a, an important part of my brain injury journey. And, you know, all right, I'm a word geek, I fully admit it. And I kind of go back to where the word comes from, you know, the Latin word that means voice. And that's what I think about advocacy. It's about using my voice. It's about having a calling. It's about using my experience to, to tell my story and to make a difference for myself and for others. And I got started um, very simply. It was by writing a letter. There was something going on in my home state of Maine that I wanted to, to share my story. I wanted to see if I could make a difference. I couldn't travel at the time, so I wrote a letter. And then I was hooked on, on using my story, on trying to make a difference. And it really has become a calling for me to, um, to be an advocate. Fantastic. Uh, Stacia, can you tell us a little bit about your, your experiences? Sure. Uh, well, I, I think, first of all, I would like to say that for me, advocacy means educating about brain injury mm -hmm. on some level to shed light on the reality of living with a brain injury um, and all in mind with the goal of helping to generate a change in the viewpoints around brain injury to alter the outcome for someone else down the road. So that's what I always keep that in mind, educate, shed light on this reality that we call living with brain injury and try to change the outcome for someone else. The ways, so like, like Carol, um, I didn't, write a letter at first, but I was asked just to speak at this uh, legislative breakfast in town for a couple of minutes one day back a long time ago. And that's how I got my start in the advocacy. And I wrote, started writing my story and it snowballed from there. And today my ways of advocating are through coaching other people, speaking at conferences or legislative events, nonprofit organizations, hospitals, schools, educating in general. And I am a former educator, like Carol will probably tell you she is. And so there's that. Um, writing now and volunteering with state and national councils, running a support group for a while, um, and supporting survivors one-on-one on one in the local at the local level, but also just keeping informed myself as to what's going on in brain injury world. There are so many ways, aren't there, for us to, to advocate to use our stories to mm -hmm. difference. Yeah. And Angela. So I began um, my first trip to Washington, D.C., National Brain Injury Awareness Day. I had left the hospital six months before, and I was still on a hard, call, hard neck call for a healing C1 vertebrae. And my, my, my greatest advocate in my life is Karen Keating. And she walked this hobbly woman <laughs> into my legislative offices. I couldn't have made those appointments on my own. She helped me connect with my representatives. And I just was guided to a chair. I sat down. I don't really remember what I said. But um, I know that, as Carol said, my voice really made a difference. And from that day, I've been encouraging others who live with brain injuries to share their voices in whatever way possible. I think every one of us has a very unique and important story. Whoa, the sun, sorry. <laughs> and there is such power, I think, in our stories <clears throat> that, you know, I mean, statistics are, are dry, but our stories, sorry, Stacia, as the math person, um, you know, <laughs> but our, our, our stories, you know, they, they add meat to the bones. They add, you know, music to the words. Um, they, they put um, a face to, to the numbers. And that's, I think, what we can do, you know, as as advocates, um, to help explain to people what this injury is, the impact of it. Because um, I mean, we're living it every day, and so we, you know, I think, we we are the best people to express that. And learning how to express that is, has been a 
a, a gift, a joy, a challenge, a, a everything all wrapped up in one. One of the things that we hear a lot from folks who um, contact our helpline is it feels intimidating and overwhelming. They feel like they somehow have to be they have to be a legis they feel like they have to be a legislative expert, right? I have to know the I'm like and this is one of the things that I want to make sure people understand that the power is in the story and not your legislative expertise. Mm -hmm. um, as Carol so eloquently put it, right there the the numbers help to paint a picture of the scope of the issue. But that's I feel like that's the border of the painting. Like, all right, this is how big it is. And now you guys are filling in the color and the hues and the depth and kind of giving it life and putting a, a face to the numbers, putting a um, background to some of the the, the data points that, that we might share. That's not inconsequential at all. Um, mm -hmm. And each person's voice, each person's story kind of contributes to helping to educate legislators and staffers to understand what this issue really means to folks. So, and good news, Ben, when you come, if, if it's your first time coming, DC is filled with, on that particular day, the, that event, I've met some of the coolest survivors I've ever met from all over the country. So when you arrive, if you're a newbie, you won't be a newbie for long because there will be tons of seasoned advocates who are more than, well, more than glad to help kind of point you in the right direction. We're on this. We're on the same team. We're all in this together, helping to share our stories in a meaningful way. So, for the folks who are thinking about either coming to Awareness Day in DC or participating in some way, shape, or form, are there some tips or strategies or things that uh, folks should be aware of as they either plan to come or plan to start to be an advocate? Um, we'll start with Stacia this time. Mm -hmm. Well, having not been to Advocacy Day <clears throat> before, uh, it was something I'd always considered doing, but I have not attended. This will be my first year doing that. Um, and as a newer, I know, as a newer member of the National, you know, the Brain Injury Council, I, I knew this was the year. And I'm ready for my voice to be bigger on behalf of the brain injury community. But I can tell you that I've spoken it enough um conferences and travel to go get my story out there and other on other platforms that pace yourself <laughs> pace yourself if it's at all like i'm expecting and the other two carol and angela will probably be able to confirm that um make a plan a make a plan b probably make a plan c mm -hmm. and i would say uh, i know i'm planning on finding those quiet places to regroup, even if it's mm -hmm. a back stairwell or a bathroom stall. That's my, now you know my secrets. You know where to find them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I always have uh, these invisible earplugs, I, the Vibes, I think is the brand, that, that dull the background noise. And mm. so that can help preserve my stamina as well. So uh, I think those are pretty tangible and universal yeah. tips. Great. And Carol? Um, you know, kind of building on what, what Stacia said, you know, those marble hallways can be loud. So the, the earplugs, you know, definitely are, are important. I mean, wearing comfortable shoes because it can be a oh, lot of walking. Sure. Those, those buildings are, are, are big where the congressional yeah. offices are. So even if you have some, um, a couple of representatives are in the same building, it could be a, a, a relatively long walk um, between yeah. offices. So this is not the day for the high heels. <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and, and knowing that, you know, sometimes depending on schedules, meetings happen in hallways. Sometimes mm -hmm. meetings happen mm -hmm. quickly. Um, learning how to tell one's brain injury story briefly. Um, Concisely as possible. That's just sometimes challenging for us. Absolutely, yes. And that, that, you know, BIA does a great job of kind of providing with us with, with here are the issues. And then I always like, kind of look at the issue papers and say, okay, where does my story fit? What piece of my story do I tell? 
because I'm not going to tell, you know, beginning to, to, you know, wherever I am now, it's, 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 there's not time and it's not relevant, but I'm sure that some slice of my story is going to be relevant to whatever the position papers are that BIA provides. So that's what I focus on. So finding a focus. Um, another one and I might see. Go ahead, all of our Andrew. sites will be on reauthorizing the TBI Act this yes. year. All of yeah. our sites are on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I also I put I have put the addresses of all of the congressional buildings everywhere that I'm going to go. All of those addresses are in my phone. So as I'm walking oh. from place to place, mm -hmm. I just I, I <clears throat> have the address on, in my phone and it tells me how to get there because I'm very directionally challenged. Um, so that helps me to to feel like I know where where I'm going. If I'm if I am end up depending on walking somewhere, all of the all of the the numbers of all of my congressional um, um, visits, the, the office numbers are in my phone. So I don't have to look them up while I'm in the building. Um, I know exactly where I'm going ahead of time. Basically, I, everything I do, kind of building again on what Stacia said, mm -hmm. to manage my energy because I like a lot of survivors, I get tired easily. So it's all about trying to manage my energy. I also try to find a brain buddy for the day because I can lose track of time pretty easily. <laughs> so I try to identify another partner, um, partner in crime who's attending that I can just spend the day with because there's a lot of people uh, at, at the event and it can be pretty overwhelming. But if I have one person sort of as my partner, my brain buddy, um, I'm, I'm, I feel more secure in my schedule. That's a good idea too. All fantastic suggestions as far as kind of planning ahead, right? Kind of planning to conserve as much cognitive energy as you can, as well as for those of us, I too, and directionally challenged. So having those things like knowing where you're going, because those are not small buildings and it's very easy to get lost on figuring out where you need to get from where you are to where you need to go. So it's well, always helpful yes. to that. Getting into those buildings requires a lot of time. So give yourself plenty of time. The lines can be long. So if you have an appointment that in, at 30 minutes, you want to give yourself maybe an hour or 30 minutes before the appointment to arrive because it mm -hmm. can take quite a bit of time to get into the buildings. Yes. I'm, no, learning, and... I'm learning so much. <laughs> Heading into my first time. I'm so glad I'm here today. I'm already taking, <laughs> not, taking notes over here. You know, and, and, staying, and staying flexible you know mm -hmm. sometimes things don't you know work out quite the way that we right. want sometimes brain injury symptoms they might appear when we don't want them to during one of my meetings last year they were doing construction in the office where i was and i'm very sound sensitive and even with my earplugs i i lost my train of thought because i, I the sound was just everywhere and they got to meet my brain injury called brain hilda mm -hmm. um and it was honestly it was probably the best advocacy i could have done because they got to see brain injury in real time see, yeah and I, I needed a little help and they 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 called down to the nurse's office and they helped me get there because i needed to lie down because it was it was too much in that moment and wow so, stuff happens bravo and that's okay um and kind of having having those Knowing that stuff stuff will happen, but there are there are nurses stations in every building, um, you know. So there are there are ways that we can be that we can do this and be safe. And like like Anne just said, having a buddy, um, you know. So somebody to a plan for what right? What if brain injury symptoms do um, occur? Where where can I rest? You know, there are places you know for us to be okay and to have some some quiet and downtime. Um, and just knowing, all right, well, if things don't go according to plan, you know, okay. You know, one year I showed up at the wrong reception. <laughs> That's true. That can happen. <laughs> <laughs> they had good food too. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, funny. Um, so the one little nugget I'll add, or just, uh, I don't know what to call it, addendum is for um, folks who cannot get to Awareness Day. We, I mean, the advocacy, yes, it's great if we can physically show up in DC. Your, your presence makes a statement in and of itself as you're telling your story, as you're kind of sharing your experiences. 
But if you can't make it to uh, DC, there are certainly other opportunities to still be an advocate, to still share your story, to still push for the reauthorization of the TBI Act, whether it's you know, sending um, emails, calling your representative's office, visiting them in your in their home state office, whatever it, it might be, there are still opportunities for it. So don't feel like if you can't get to DC, you can't be an advocate. That is certainly yeah. not the you case. Summed, you summed it up well, Greg. Everyone who's in DC has local office. And sometimes those local offices are more impactful and beneficial and you're in your hood. So you don't have to travel. I'm I'm a long way away from DC, so you don't have to make that giant uh, trip if, if you can't afford the means or if you're not able mm -hmm. to. The local offices are just as powerful. And mm -hmm. as Carol stated, her first opportunity was letter writing. That's very, very important too. Mm -hmm. It's all about focusing on what we can do. I mean, that's a, a mantra of mine of, since the brain injury is, Right, what can I do? Yes, there's a lot of stuff that I can't do, but if we focus on what we can do and whatever that is, then then that you know moves the needle forward. Excellent. Well, I thank you if all I could, for if coming. I could Go just ahead. One piece of advice. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Buildings yes. don't allow drinks, so bring an empty water bottle. I freaking had to throw and lose my favorite perfume bottle, Burberry perfume, brand new, and I had to throw it away, and it was hard. So don't go into any buildings because they're not allowed to have fluids. Just bring in an empty water bottle. Tip. True. Yep. There's places to fill those up throughout the building. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. So thanks for coming and sharing a little bit about your experiences and kind of encouraging folks to be an advocate in whatever way that uh, that happens for you. Um, thank you for coming, sharing, uh, and I certainly look forward to the future uh, recordings and Facebook Lives and other events we'll be doing throughout the year. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Thank Maybe I'll see you in DC, and if not, that's okay.